Hello again to all of those who may be listening. This is episode 20 of DominoCast, and it's actually a special one. We may not even have a song break in this one, actually. We'll see. Maya is joining me again. He's a regular (laughs) guest on here, as you all know. Who knows, maybe one day it'll be <laughs> Domino and Maya cast. <laughs> I think people have had enough of me. <laughs> no, they'll get over it. <laughs> it's be good cast, so that guy wasn't on here all the time. We're going to get some better guests. <laughs> you live with me, so you're allowed to be. So does your cat. <laughs> so does my cat, yes, the but cat she doesn't on. speak. She doesn't speak. <laughs> Well, she speaks when she's hungry or when she wants our attention. (laughs) Recently, over the last week of October, actually, Maya and I went on a very special trip, one that we had always been wanting to do, and we finally got to. We went to the New York of the West, San Francisco. Better known as the San Francisco of the West. (laughs) (laughs) It is one of my favorite cities in the world, actually. Uh, I love cities and I love traveling to see them because I love architecture. And I love uh, every city has a different personality. And I had been to San Francisco a few times when I was younger, 14 and 15, I believe. But um, every time I went there, I didn't really get to see it. I landed there on an airplane, and then I went to go visit my uncle in California, who lived in a nearby town. Um, the first time I went to San Francisco, though, this is a little bit of history, back when I was really young, early teenager, um, I I stayed around the the port area around Fisherman's Wharf. And I went on a tour boat and I sailed around Alcatraz Island and I sailed underneath the Golden Gate Bridge. It was actually very memorable, even though I did not get to see everything I had always wanted. But that was a memorable trip. I do have pictures of it, but I probably won't put that up because I have to find them. (laughs) I have them put away somewhere. They're really old photographs, but they're still really good. I I do remember them. And I had told Maya that one day I want to go there with you, and we finally got to this year. It was an unexpected trip, but we had the opportunity, and that's where we decided to go. Mm Mm-hmm. Was a very easy flight there. and Except for the turbulence that we hit. And uh, it was this one pilot in particular, he just, he wouldn't give up. He just, he just kept trying to raise to a certain altitude and the clouds just weren't letting him. Yes. He was jostling us around for about three hours and finally he just hit something so hard, made everybody fly out of their seats and he was yeah. like, okay folks, we're not going to try that anymore. We're just going to go yeah, a little villa. Yeah, no shit. Every, <laughs> the, the whole plane nearly spun in a circle. That was the hardest turbulence I had ever hit in my life, and I have flown before. I don't mind flying. A lot of people are afraid to. I actually love doing it. <clears throat> but, um, yeah. That was going over, I think, the planes, the Great Plains coming. Mm-hmm. It was... 
We had already left Chicago at that yeah, point. Yeah, we went from Raleigh to Chicago yeah. to Chicago to San Francisco. Yeah. Flying into San Francisco, I mean, not, not San Francisco, but flying into Chicago was really beautiful, actually. Mm-hmm. And I wish that I had gotten a picture of it, but I had a headache during that time and I didn't think about it. Yeah. And... It was pretty cool. I've never yes. seen that skyline, so it was pretty cool. It's gorgeous. Um, <clears throat> we'll have to visit Chicago one day. Chicago. Homer the Chicago dig. <laughs> we have a lot of plans to visit certain cities. Um, of course, ultimately, is our trip to Japan. That is kind of our dream trip. <laughs> get there one day too this was a good uh test at least test our metal well, this is one that i had always wanted to go back to and san francisco to me is very beautiful it's a very picturesque city its location it's unique it's not like any other city in the world uh it's got beautiful uh temperature for my skin <laughs> uh lovely views all around very striking um we, uh, I actually thought we would run into fog because it's also known as the foggy city. It's also yeah. known as, oh, never mind. <laughs> what? Minus the O. <laughs> oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> I can say it. It is gay bay, yes. Uh, bay. San Francisco has the highest population of, uh, LGBT. Open LGBT. <laughs> yeah. Frankly, I think it is, uh. Some place in the deep south, honestly, probably has the most LGBT. You just don't want to admit it. Uh, yeah, San Francisco has a long history of allowing uh, many gay and lesbian rights, actually, and starting that whole movement to make sure that we all have our equal rights. It is a city of many firsts. Um, and I would love to live there someday. Who knows? <clears throat> real nice, really beautiful. Um, uh, real real estate. Like the people who live there, I have to have some good damn jobs. Yeah, but you said that even though taxes are higher on that side of the country, like the jobs take care of it. Um, see that that's the thing. Anybody out there who has somebody inside of their life who tells them, oh, you don't want to move there. It's too expensive. Um, <laughs> do not listen to them <laughs> because if you're moving someplace, the minimum wage typically takes care of um, a, a few living expenses. Mm-hmm. Like you're, you won't be able to move into a mansion, but you'll at the very least be able to rent rent a small apartment or a small place or even have roommates who you can split bills with and stuff. There's no place in the world where the minimum wage is like $7 and the average income has to be like 70,000 a year or something like that. It's not, that's not how it works. People need to be able to survive and the cities know that they can't just have a bunch of homeless people walking around. It's the city would not survive itself. Mm. So yeah, they do need to have, they do need to make sure its residents can live. <laughs> I was impressed with the gas there. The gas was not the gas was not as expensive as I thought it would be. Speaking of which, should we mention the rent a car? <laughs> okay, well, well, we'll get to everything. <laughs> <laughs> the uh... but this is a very long story. That's why I don't think we're going to have a song break. So I hope that's all right with everyone. If you need to have a break, just pause it at any time. I'll still be here. That's what pause buttons are for. That's what pause buttons are for, yes. Go get um, a munch or something. Get you a munchie. Um, so we we rented from a rent-a-car company right there at the airport in San Francisco. When we landed, we went straight from uh, the terminal to baggage claim. Took forever. The airport reminds me of Tokyo. I've never been to Tokyo, but I've seen enough of it that it's almost like I have been there. <laughs> not the the airport was not as bustling as it was when I was there a few years ago. Yeah, and actually back when I was like the first time I ever went there when I was a teenager, it was really bustling, but mm-hmm. that's because of the recent events of this year. Mm-hmm. People actually, just aren't traveling. And also 
we traveled to San Francisco around the perfect time. They say that if you want to go, go in September through October, maybe November, because it's not really the tourism time. Mm-hmm. And the temperatures are really nice. Yeah. And the weather was really nice. The weather was great. We did not run into any fog. The skies were absolutely completely clear the entire time we were there. I didn't see one cloud until the last day, actually. The, truly, the only discomfort there was was the sun was really bright. That's it. Yeah. I don't like sun. So it, it's... It, it made for some really good um, photography. Mm-hmm. And I got a lot of it. I took well over 100 pictures. And that's no joke. <laughs> it's no yoke. <laughs> so we we went to the rent a car place straight from baggage claim, which took forever. Uh, we uh, took their little monorail system, which uh, looped around the airport and took us to rent a car. And uh, we were rented. <laughs> Maybe you could put up a picture. We were <laughs> rented a brand spanking new Ford EcoSport. I I never in my life have heard of this vehicle. <laughs> I have never seen this vehicle. I, I think I have heard of an EcoSport. I didn't know Ford made it, though. But the thing is, I'm really good with cars, but... It's like a small SUV. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I would say we spent close to 15 minutes, realistically 15 minutes trying to figure out how to start it <laughs> uh, it is a keyless entry vehicle uh never in my life do i ever want to own one of these things. i've never used one i'm sorry i'm a boomer but i've never we're, used we're not boomers but <laughs> i have never <laughs> i i have never in my life used a keyless entry car yeah, no, i didn't know how I. to start it I I love cars, okay, people? Yeah, I think anyone who knows me knows I love automobiles. I prefer older automobiles, ones that I can feel. I, I like to feel the mechanics. I like to start it with a key, and I like the um, older styling. I love classics, mostly. Mm-hmm. I cannot stand anything modern, really. Modern cars annoy me, for the most part. And this thing really took the cake. It was the crown on the annoyance of modern automobiles. <laughs> so this may be common knowledge for people who have start, who have push button start cars. Um, I was sitting in, in it and I literally had to Google how to start it. I had to push, I had to check YouTube videos and this is how clueless I am about it, is that it's obviously common sense how to start it, so they don't need to mention it. Mm-hmm. So I just kept looking and looking, and it said, push the brake, push the button. And me in my classic way, I pushed the brake, let off the brake, <laughs> push the button, Yeah, and you're not supposed to. But what car in the world do you need to hold down the brake to start the car? I'm that guessing is the it- dumbest idea I've ever heard. I'm guessing it's working on the clutch notion of um, gear shifting. Like, even automatics do it. When you shift into a certain gear in an automatic, you have to push the brake. Yeah. When you are in a manual, you have to push the clutch. The brake acts as a clutch. And I guess it's working off that mentality. If these people know to push the brake when they're shifting gears, they'll know to push the brake when they push a button. The thing is, is, I don't push the brake to start my car. I don't push a brake to <laughs> turn on the radio. So yeah. I didn't know, but eventually I got it. We got it started. <laughs> um, then there was trying to figure out how to turn lights on. Oh, yeah. Trying to figure out how to get the GPS to work. I had to figure out how to turn it off, too. Yeah, couldn't the figure car out would not go off once it was on unless you turn it off a certain way. The car will not lock unless you have the little dongle. I mean, that that's the, that's the worst part of it. It's so easy to steal. Like they they, if if someone was trying to steal the vehicle, they could mm-hmm. steal it if they wanted to. If they had the uh, well, if you want to call it a key. Mm-hmm. If someone was dumb like me and left it in the cup holder like I did when we went to Chinatown, I, I it wasn't oh. locked. It's sitting in the damn car. Yeah. So anybody could just open the door 
and push that button and start the car. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, uh, uh, we'll get to our Chinatown experience uh, in a, soon. Mm. But when we went there, um, we you had left the uh, the um, thing in the car, and because we were a little distracted at the moment, Chinatown was a little busy. Um, and we were just a little distracted, then uh, we thought, oh, great, did we lock ourselves out of the vehicle? Yeah. That's going to be great for something we're renting. But no, you went back over and you opened the door like it was the most casual thing in the world, so anyone could have done that. Yep. It was not locked. <laughs> it, I think it was still running. <laughs> well, I bought the full insurance plan on the whole freaking car, so we were covered for just about everything. We were even covered for if... We were even covered if we got into a wreck and ended up in the hospital. The rent-a-car company would pay our bills. So <laughs> that's, nice. that's how insured we were. So yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> now that must be why the man behind the counter said that you have the full package. Oh yeah. Um, unless he was talking about me. unless he was talking to you about me. He's like, oh, son. I, yeah, I already know I have. The you full have package. the full package. Yeah. <laughs> I already know that I have the full everything with you. Full Monty. <laughs> oh, I saw that movie years ago. My mom loves that movie. The Full Monty. Oh my god, I haven't thought about that in years. <laughs> and they do actually do it in the end. It's every man's dream. Okay, Magic for, Mike for anyone, stole everything. For anyone who doesn't know The Full Monty, it's just literally a, a movie about guys that uh, are... They're like middle-aged. They, yeah, they're middle-aged, but they're all trying to get to know each other so they can all eventually perform what they call the full Monty, which is literally strip in for a crowd. They strip everything that they're wearing for a crowd in the end, like, you know, for just male entertainment. Mm. <laughs> I kind of wonder if Magic Mike stole their uh, stole that. I never saw that, so I don't really Neither. care. Uh, and that's something, you know, when, when that came out, Magic Mike, and people who knew I was gay, they said, oh, you, you're going to love this. And I was like, I... It's got how do you Kevin know that? Nash in it. How do you know I'm going to love it? D it me being gay, does that mean I'm, uh, I'm instantly attracted to every other guy in the world? No, I have my preferences. Thank you. Old stilt-legged Kevin Nash is in it. <laughs> in fact, I am so strict with my preferences that I'm sure it annoys a lot of people. <laughs> that was during that time when they were doing a lot of, like, female sexual awakening movies that don't star really any female empowerment at all. <laughs> like the Fifty Shades of Grey movies and stuff. Mm. Which apparently the piece sequel of, to it is hilarious. <laughs> like, it is so terrible. <laughs> like, it is a modern... Uh, disaster film. Oh yeah, uh, a disaster uh, for cinema, and it's also di a disaster of literature. Yeah, the writers. For, for those of you who don't know, uh, Fifty Shades of Grey was a Twilight fan fiction originally. <laughs> and so that, if that makes it any better, <laughs> Sadie, don't. She's poked me in the butt. Oh, Sadie, stop we're, it. we're sitting in our chairs, and Sadie's re our, our casual. <laughs> is reaching through my chair and poking me in my butt. She does it all the time for no reason. <laughs> Just it. reach behind there and give Gar her... Ow! <laughs> no, don't reach down through the chair, dear. If you do that, she's just going to play with it. Okay, she ran away. Okay. Okay. Anyway. Uh, yeah. That's my Ford EcoSport story. For those of you interested in the longer story, <laughs> you you can uh, read how I survived the Ford Eco experience, Eco Sport experience. <laughs> Forward by Domino. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's a not lot. a good car. I don't like it. It doesn't <laughs> feel good. It's not good for hills. You gotta literally push the pedal to the metal to get it to go over 55. And for those of you who do not know anything about San Francisco, um, it's famously built on hills. 
nobody there follows road laws either. So, and I know that's sort of the, <laughs> we're such badasses kind of thing, but no, it's to the point that yeah. literally they will commit vehicular homicide to get away <laughs> with it, probably. Yeah. Like they, they literally want to get into wrecks and it's disturbing. Nobody, that whole no right turn on red thing California is famous for, nobody follows it. In fact, people will run red lights constantly. So we're sitting at a red light, and of course, uh, people who honk behind us want us to move. And if we don't, then they just go around us and break the law. And in fact, that one idiot did it. Remember when we were down at Fisherman's Wharf? Uh, he ran right around us. And he instantly got a red light, so he didn't get anywhere. Yeah, he didn't get anywhere. Because he was a dumbass. He, and he sped over the crosswalk, which is something you're not supposed to do. You're not supposed to... Because if I turn on that red, there's people crossing the crosswalk, and they're going to get run over. You have to look to your right and make sure nobody's crossing the crosswalk. He didn't, and he sped over the crosswalk and then got stopped on a red light right on the damn crosswalk. <laughs> dumbass. <laughs> Anyway, oh. yeah, um, that was, if I can, spoiler alert, <laughs> for the San Francisco trip, the absolute worst part of all of it, it the, there unfortunately was a huge downside to it, and it was the, the traffic. That's the part that stressed you. Like, you loved everything that we did. It made me way. nauseous. Like, it made me literally bedridden that i just i hated it i hated the traffic in san francisco when you hear traffic you think well bumper to bumper everything's slow i know no it is so constantly moving and fast it's just hectic. but it's it's bumper to bumper speed um i think one reason why it's like that um because the last time I was there, I don't remember it being like that. Like, I remember it being a little hectic the last time I was there. I wasn't driving. My uncle was. But I think the reason that everybody had so much room to do that and speed around is because the trolleys weren't running. Yeah, no trolleys. All the trolleys are put away, which, that's, that's unfortunate. I wanted to finally ride on one, one of the historical trolleys, but they put them all away until um, this whole virus problem is solved. Uh, San Francisco is doing very well with their uh, prevention and everything. Everybody follows the mass rules and everything. Everyone is very careful. Um, the people are actually very nice when they're not in a car. <laughs> uh, a lot of road rage. A lot, a lot of road rage. Everybody flipping everyone off, yelling out their windows and cursing and honking. The yeah, thing it's is, it's just the drivers. And, and any anywhere else, people are pretty decent to you. They would have a lot of road rage death cases in California if everyone had a gun, like here in North Carolina. Here in North Carolina, everyone has a gun. So yeah, I've seen them. Like walk right into the bank with them sticking out of their holster. And they're always these little sawed-off little chipmunk-looking turds, too. Like, you, you can tell they got picked on really bad in school, and they're just like, they're all like five foot two yeah. little, and they all have this really enraged, pissed look on their face constantly. <laughs> somebody, somebody better try me. So if somebody tries me, oh, boy, yeah. you're gonna get it. Yeah, so they can pull the trigger. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, if if they allowed guns in San Francisco, holy crap, there'd be so many deaths on the I road. I almost think that that would slow down all of the road rage because they knew they would get shot. I don't know. That's that theory. If I if I take away my gun, only the criminal's going to have guns. But I don't know. A lot of people, a lot of people own guns and they don't know how to control their anger. That's the first thing. That's honestly, that that's one of the biggest reasons why I never really want to ca open carry a gun or even conceal carry a gun. Because, like, I don't feel like I can control my anger if it gets to that point. 
-hmm. If somebody is threatening me or threatening to hurt me, I feel like I would jump immediately to that. Oh, yeah, but then that's more of self-defense, so... <laughs> the law doesn't see it that way. You literally yeah. have to be attacked before yeah. you can actually shoot somebody. And, like... You can get them in trouble for threatening you, though. Yeah, you can, but... As long as you don't do anything to them, I think. Yeah, if you can... <laughs> bra if you brandish your weapon at them, you gotta... You're gonna settle that in, in court, obviously, but... It, there's no going back after you shoot someone. After you shoot someone for threatening you, it, that that doesn't work. That doesn't go down in court. You have the only way it works is if they were literally in the act of assaulting you, and that's it. But anyway, <laughs> I don't. I don't want to talk completely about laws. <laughs> um. So we got to our uh, hotel. I'm just glad that you enjoyed the trip, despite being very stressed over the driving. Yeah, we somehow got to our hotel, <laughs> I'll put it that way, while driving. The hotel was nice. Yes, the hotel was nice. It was... I um, wondered if it was haunted. We, we uh, didn't have any experiences, well, no. though, I will say that um, we both at different times... Uh, f I didn't feel it. You felt a vibration. Yeah. Um, when I was laying in bed, it could have been anything, honestly. It could have been a truck driving by. It could have been a shower running. We weren't near the road, though. It could have been anything. And we were on the fourth floor. But I felt a slight vibration in our bed when I was mm -hmm. laying in it. And it felt like, it felt like when you turn on like a massager, uh -huh. like that buzz feeling, the brr, 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 like yeah. that. It's what it felt like. My experience was I was sitting up with my laptop when uh, I was getting ready to go to bed in a little, a little bit. And um, the water bottle beside me was flickering, and I looked over, and it the water in it was moving. Mm. And I had not touched it, and nothing else uh, was really moving. So it could have been a very slight vibration that uh, set it off, because yeah. liquid is like that. It feels everything. And, um, but, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, San Francisco is prone to earthquakes. It has been for years. And as such, all of their structures have to be fortified. And we're, I'm very thankful that many of the very famous districts and structures are still standing today, considering their history. And, um, so that's why we wondered if we had possibly felt a little bit of earthquake vibration. It's possible. It's possible. Uh, we stayed on the fourth floor. We didn't really have a window. Or we had a window to the side, but it was just an alleyway. Yeah, we had a window to an alley. But that's the city. <laughs> you know, that, that just happens. I didn't mind. Yeah. Uh, no parking whatsoever. It, no parking lots. Let me put it that way. And I guess that goes, it's a city, you yes. know, it's not going to have a parking lot. The thing is though, there are parking lots, but not in downtown. Yeah. Uh, downtown, you need to use garages or the side of the street, but that's just downtown. That's in any city. It's congested. Mm -hmm. They have to save space for the buildings. So we had to park in an alleyway beside the hotel just to check in. And then they gave us a, our own garage door opener so that we could mm -hmm. open up the secret layer underneath the hotel. <laughs> yeah. so, so that I actually liked that because that meant that, you know, it was less of chance of a break in. Yeah, it was pretty it was pretty secure. And there was always a security guard on a bicycle outside of it. Mm -hmm. Always sitting there. But it was okay. Yeah, we were near downtown. Um I mean our hotel was literally right down the street from City Hall. Mm -hmm. Glorious City Hall. It's Beautiful and large. I got pictures of it. Mm -hmm. I loved City Hall. Um, just one of the many landmarks of San Francisco that I got pictures of. Mm -hmm. uh, getting into our first, uh, our first destination that I went to, um, Maya pretty much said to me to set up all of the destinations of where to go. And everything. So I did a lot of my planning and everything. The first district we went to was Japantown. And I wanted that to be first because me and Maya absolutely love Asian culture, particularly Japanese culture. And 
Uh, I went to the historical Japan town, which actually is the first one ever established in America. It's the, also the oldest. Uh, as I said before, San Francisco is a lot of firsts, and I had the first ever Japan town, Japanese district. Very beautiful there, very peaceful actually, considering being in the middle of the town. Um, there actually wasn't too many people when we first arrived, but they started to fill in as we walked around. Uh, we walked around the square, saw the Peace Pagoda, which actually is much taller than what pictures will show. Yeah, it's a five-tiered, uh, I think, made of cement. And I think it would have to be to survive earthquakes. <laughs> a very tall pagoda. Uh, and I think it's been there ever since this district was established, I think. Um, Japantown is also known as uh, Nihonmachi, which is uh, pretty much Japantown in Japanese. Um, we had ramen there. Yes. We went to one of the restaurants in Japan Center, which is the mall. Mm -hmm. It's split into two sections on both sides of the square. Uh, Japan Center, and we uh, we had ramen. It was very, very good ramen. <laughs> uh, malls in general are slow nowadays anyway. Not many people enjoy malls, and not many people shop at them. They're kind of inconvenient and... They, they don't carry a lot of items anymore. Uh, but in particular, this mall was very, very much empty. I wouldn't say it was a dead mall just yet, but it was... Well, empty, it's empty. because of COVID. Yeah. It's because of the whole virus situation. Like They had a bunch of stuff there. A bunch of merchandise, a bunch of um, things on display for Japanese uh, culture and for people who love it. But um, there just wasn't a lot of people there, but I also have to keep in mind this was like in the morning. It was like, yeah, it was, it was before noon and it was very empty and it it needs to be said because it is kind of sad that, that Japantown is in kind of a dire situation right now because of the whole COVID thing, because landlords who own the the areas in the malls, like the actual kiosks inside the mall and the stores in the mall, who the owners rent from, are not cutting rent during all of this. Like, they're not allowing them a... a uh, a break from rent during all of this. So a lot of these stores are closing down and a lot of them have been there since, you know, the seventies and eighties and <clears throat> it kind of sucks. So if I don't know that if there's a campaign or anything going on right now, it's, it's really worth it because it's a very beautiful mall and it's, you know, it's part of history. It's part of San Francisco's history and yeah. Japantown's history. And it's very historical. It's almost a landmark district. Yeah. We kind of did our part, I guess, to try to help out by shopping there and oh, buying yes. some stuff. I bought uh, another uh, Japanese mask from my collection. I bought an angry kitsune. <laughs> a kitsune is a fox spirit, uh, very famous in Japanese mythology, which I wore uh, on Halloween. And we gave everybody a preview of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we also, I also got a scroll, which I removed it off of the scroll rods because I couldn't take that off the plane. Remember? <laughs> yeah. And I and I kept my scroll. It's a a scroll from the anime Bleach, mm -hmm. which I absolutely which love. Bleach. Not everyone may know about. No. <laughs> well, I'm sure everybody knows about yeah. Bleach. It's a famous one. <laughs> um, Ew! You like Inuyasha? It's all about bleach. I love Inuyasha and bleach. <laughs> Ew, you like bleach? It's all about Dragon Ball. In fact, I've seen yaoi artwork of Ichigo and Inuyasha together. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> why couldn't you have gotten a scroll of that? I wouldn't mind, actually. <laughs> what the? <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have one like that for sale. <laughs> Ichigo! <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh. Um, I don't think Japantown will go out of business. 
maybe the, the, some of the stores could, but I think that San Francisco will take care of it because it's historical. And the whole idea of Japan Center Mall, um, it's built around the notion that uh, in Japan, malls are still very popular. Mm-hmm. They are still popular. They're still sh- uh, shopped uh, by the Japanese people. And, and and when you have a themed district like that, it sure, it brings in tourists, but it is primarily built for the foreign people to feel comfortable living there because it feels like their homeland. Mm-hmm. It does, even the architecture. Even yes. The, right down to the sidewalk designs. Everything looked like Japan in Japantown, and I really love that. <laughs> Bilingual signs as well. Street signs. Yep. <laughs> Very nice. Had uh, lots of uh, lots of trinkets and stores and bookstores and lots of restaurants. It was really nice. And we went to where you got your scroll. It was a, an anime shop, mm-hmm. actually. So they do have an anime shop. They have. They had several, actually. We just chose to go to this one. <clears throat> we'll go back again in the future. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. The next day, we went to the very famous and historical Chinatown, mm-hmm. which is also is extremely old. It was established in the uh, early 1900s, I believe. It is the uh, very first Chinatown in America. So just like Japantown was the first one in America, so was Chinatown. Mm-hmm. And the architecture there is absolutely stunning. It, it's very well preserved for a city that is bombarded by earthquakes so much in its past. <laughs> Some of the buildings do look like they've been up for a hundred years. Yeah. Like legitimately. <laughs> they don't look like they've been occupied any time recently. Some of them do look empty and like, dusty and like maybe they're just used for storage now a lot of them but a lot of it looks straight out of the 1920s and 30s i absolutely loved that so much i love the lamppost with the dragons around them and uh, all the pagoda towers um chinatown is literally uh right down the street from the very famous transamerica pyramid which i got several pictures of I was very uh, lucky to have such a dramatic view of it. And we had a nice view of the uh, tower from the restaurant we went to, actually. I didn't even notice that until we were done eating. It was right behind you the whole time, (laughs) out the window. (laughs) We went to a restaurant called the Oriental Pearl, uh, named after the very famous Oriental Pearl River in China. And... They have a very famous tower in Shanghai. It's called the Oriental Pearl Tower. This restaurant was very lovely inside. Mm. We got pictures of it, and the food was very good, too. Very classy. You could tell during (laughs) during, uh, better times, it probably definitely is a big business lunch and supper Mm. place where people go to uh, wine and dine. Yes. It's a very classy place. But because of things going on right now and we it was so we were like their first customers it was just you me and these two other girls and that was it and we sat all the way across the room from each other <laughs> so which is you know standards for you know yes uh, social distancing right now the thing I, i'm so impressed with how san francisco is handling everything because you can see that it's so easy to do Yeah, you just exist with a mask on your face, and that's it. And and you don't touch other people, and you see everything is cleaned after it's been used. How hard is that? You can even just do it without a freaking virus, uh, you know, going around the world. Mm -hmm. Nobody with their nose sticking out of their mask either. Yeah. Everybody doing it perfectly. It's ridiculous. (laughs) (laughs) But, uh, yeah, after we ate, that was the first thing we did. We we ate at the restaurant, and then we decided, well, well I want, we want to walk around and get pictures of everything. And I got lots of pictures in Chinatown. And I saw online that I wanted to go to this one place called the Peking Bazaar. <laughs> and I kid you not that I, I didn't know where it was. 
because I didn't look up the address. I just saw pictures of it, and I was like, oh, that would be really interesting to visit that. The first store we walk into was the Peking Bazaar, and I did not even know. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Huge place. Huge inside. And I could not leave without getting something. I bought mm-hmm. myself a little Chinese ornamental lantern. That's where that change came from. Because remember, they wouldn't let me use my card. I had to have cash. Yes. I just so happened to have just enough. So they gave me a little bit of change. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, a lovely little bubble lantern that I have hanging up now. I want. I needed to get souvenirs from both Asian districts. <laughs> that that's just a must. You you go there and you gotta bring something home with you. You have to. But, um, this place had some very one of a kind stuff in it too. Yes, stuff you could and, tell they brought straight over the boat. And it, and while some of them, you know, were expensive, everything there though mostly was very reasonably priced. Yeah, it was. It wasn't like. Boutique stuff, boutique price, but it was bo- okay. It was boutique stuff, but not boutique price. Yes, stuff one of a kind, kind of stuff you've never seen anywhere, and you probably won't see anywhere else but there. Like maybe it is the standard in China. Maybe it is you can buy it at IKEA China, but here it's nobody else has it, so they still mm-hmm. keep the IKEA price. <laughs> Some Lovely of it you could stuff. tell had been sitting there for. Like a long time, a few years, because just nobody had bought it. Like nobody, like, what am I going to do with a a three foot tall dragon mirror? <laughs> you know, a three foot yes. tall, 150 pound mirror shaped like a dragon. But you know, you know what? If I knew that I didn't have to get on a plane and pack things, I definitely, and if I had, you know, the money to do it right then, I would have bought a bunch of things from in oh, there. Oh, yeah. If if we had lived in San Francisco, and we were there to shop, definitely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I could see that Barbara Streisand coming down from the hills every now and then. It's like I want to buy me. I want to buy a me. What we got? <laughs> dragon. Oh, I'm gonna take a dragon me. <laughs> <laughs> I want to own some of those lanterns one day. The the big paper moon lanterns and mm-hmm. those were really nice. And maybe get a Buddha from there, too. Um, I love that Shin-Chan is so popular everywhere, in both Japan and China. <laughs> yeah. Shin-Chan trink- trinkets Considering everywhere. Considering he's a Japanese anime character, I was really surprised to see him in Chinatown. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> Ready uh, vacation? Uh? People who don't know Shin-Chan, he's from a very adult anime. <laughs> but it, it's it's fun adult. It's not like, you know... He's vulgar, but yet, you know, it's it's not like South Park. He's considered the Bart Simpson of yeah of uh, Japan. If anybody ever wanted to know what I was like as a child, it's Shin Chan. <laughs> I was literally Shin Chan. Oh, I would literally pull my pants down and do <laughs> disgusting things in front of everyone. <laughs> nah, yeah. hmm. Constantly You're fart just jokes. just free-spirited, that's all. Yeah, shin Chan's just free-spirited. No, that's what you are. You're free-spirited. <laughs> Say hello to Mr. Elephant! <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, the, you, you told me that there's not one episode where he doesn't get naked or something. He usually does, for one reason or another. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, anyway. The, moving on from shin Chan. <laughs> um... I wanted to visit Chinatown at night, but because of the COVID problem, uh, all the stores closed around five or six. So, um, and that wasn't restaurants. Restaurants, uh, most of the restaurants in San Francisco stayed open till one a- one and something a.m., mm-hmm. which is nice. That's what a city is supposed to do, <laughs> unlike a certain place that I know. <laughs> hey, <laughs> we we have we have. N- Military men who need their sleep. Okay, care. they need to be Not in bed everybody by. Everybody in this town's in the military. They need to be in bed by nine, <laughs> so their drill sergeant can kiss their foreheads and be like, "You have sweet dreams, soldier." Thanks, Sarge. Sarge, <laughs> tell me again about the big war. <laughs> you mean WW two? Hey, Sarge, I'm thirsty. Give me a glass of water. Anyway. 
<laughs> now private Tyrone. <laughs> in, in our town, everything closes around like eight something. Yes. And I, and I mean everything, even stores that are known to be 24 hours. Mm -hmm. It's the most annoying thing. It was for the best at this point, because I remember when Mc, I went to a McDonald's here in town back when they were open all night and they had one guy in there, one guy, no manager, no cook, no one, him. And he was doing everything and he made sure you knew it when you came by. Well, I hope you have a better night. I'm the only one in here. <laughs> That's when I think I would have ordered a bunch of things. <laughs> if he gave me an attitude. And he had one arm. <laughs> I forgot about that. What the hell? He had one arm. <laughs> and he was, he was doing everything himself and he had one God, arm. never mind. I won't trouble you. Jeez. Oh my God, you need fries more than I do, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Fries in here sucks. <laughs> I remember that night. We uh, ate a bunch of fries and ice cream and watched Tommy Boy. <laughs> yes. Oh, that, was that, was, that was that night. Yeah, you went and you got that because I had a migraine and you went out and you got me that and you came back mm -hmm. to get me some greasy food because that always helps my migraines. I can't have anything sweet. I had the ice cream after my migraine went away. Mm -hmm. Dr. Maya knows how to help. Come here, blockhead. I'm going to show you some good grief. <laughs> <laughs> and after I have a migraine is over, I get really hungry. Oh, I thought you were going to say something else. Starts with an H. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, after Chinatown, I th yeah, for the first few days we were there, we, d we just did the two Asian districts. Uh, the day after that, um, we went and saw a bunch of things in one day. Mm. Um, we saw, uh, uh, and I remember <laughs> that you were so thankful because it had its own parking lot. We went up on Telegraph Hill and we saw Coit Tower, the very famous historical Coit Tower, mm -hmm. which was built uh, in honor of, at, at the request, requestful honor of Lil Lily Hitchcock Coit, because she loved the city of San Francisco so much. She said, you know what, just, just use my millions. Build a tower. And then did. And it was built in 1933. The height of the Art Deco age. And it's a glorious tower. I'm so surprised that it has survived as long as it has. Yeah. Striking views of the city on every angle. Yeah. The tower itself was closed. Normally you can go up to the top, but that was fine with me because I could get lots of good pictures of it without people standing around or anything. There was a few other cars there, a few other people walking around. We almost had the whole lot to ourself. Mm -hmm. uh, you walk around the paths around the tower through the trees and it's so relaxing. Mm -hmm. Really yeah. nice. Very high up and you can feel it. Yeah, it's on one of the highest hills in the city. You can definitely feel it. You get a little air sick while you're up there. I do anyway. When I get really high in the air, mm -hmm. I... I get lightheaded very easily. I think you said that um, if we had lived in San Francisco, you, you said you might be able to adjust like over I might. time. Yeah. In fact, I kind of did. I kind of did while we were there. Yeah, it, it wasn't as bad the, uh, the other time you went up in the hill. Mm -hmm. But the first time, yeah, having to go up and down. Yeah. Because you literally will go up one hill on the avenue and then it just goes straight down. <laughs> <laughs> down, down, turn around. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I haven't thought about that theme song in a long time. <laughs> Me and Colette, my sister, used to make fun of it. Anyway, let's not get into that. <laughs> <laughs> Coit Tower was lovely. I'd always wanted to see it. And it was at the opposite end of Lombard Street. We did not drive down Lombard Street. We saw it. We did see it. Uh, I've, uh, well, not driven. I've never driven down Lombard Street. I have rode in a car down Lombard Street. It's always busy. There's always cars on it. In fact, our GPS always said traffic congestion reported on Lombard Street. Well, yeah. People are always Lombard driving. <laughs> yeah, they're always driving down it. 
For those of you who don't know, Lombard Street, uh, famously at the at one end of it, it is a street that swirls like a snake decoratively, and it's made out of cobblestone. And it's a historical landmark without actually being a building. <laughs> it's in a lot of video games. Yes. Any video game that has San Francisco in it has to have Lombard Street in it. And I was thinking about going down it just so we could include it in a compilation of, like, we needed to find every game that's ever had Lombard Street in it and play it and go down the street and then compare it to going down in real life. But we just didn't have enough time to put that together. Yeah. Um, if we could, we would have stayed longer and everything to see more. But um, we, I think we saw pretty much everything I wanted to see and. And everything I wanted to show you mm -hmm. while we were there in the time that we had. I believe it was after Coit Tower we went to go see uh, the Glorious Palace of Fine Arts. Mm -hmm. I think this is one of the one of your favorites. Yeah, that was cool. I didn't know that existed. I mean, I bet I did in my subconscious, but it wasn't anything I was thinking about at all. It's like, so where are we going? <laughs> <laughs> It is uh, built in reference of Roman and Greek architecture. Um, it is a park, uh, free to walk around. Uh, the facility itself was closed, uh, and, and so was the zoo. But the park is free to walk around, and you can view the structures. Um, it is uh, very beautifully put together around a small lake, uh, a lot of columns and pillars, and the grand uh, dome rotunda is the centerpiece. You can feel it walking in. Mm -hmm. You can feel like the the what they were going for. That how would Romans feel entering this humongous man-made place that's supposed to represent the gods looking down on you and stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you feel it. It's humongous. I dare say, I'll have to. You'll have to tell me the stats of it. But I think that it is bigger than like any modern arena. Like, I have been, because I love professional wrestling, I'm not going to bring up professional wrestling on a, on your podcast, like always, <laughs> but I've been to a lot of gigantic arenas, and this legitimately felt bigger than any of those places I'd ever been to. So, it was huge. Also, another very peaceful place to walk around and yes. just relax. Uh, you, you When you first walk under the domed rotunda... You're you're greeted with the statues and uh, you know of gods and f and they're all just looking down upon you and it just feels like a place you need to respect like you better not do anything bad here. <laughs> <laughs> um, you found a little, what was it? You found right in the center it of was, the floor in the in the dome. It was a metal charm shaped like a turtle with a spiral in it. It was laying right on the seal. Yeah, that was interesting. There. I probably shouldn't have moved it now that I had taken it because I, I put it in our bag, but I probably shouldn't have taken it. Somebody may have left it there to honor someone. I probably shouldn't have taken that. Like, this is a place where we met or something, and I'm going to put this here for them. Well, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> well, if you wouldn't have, then the, the Park Recreational Service would have taken it. I guess. But Yeah, he was just sitting in the middle of it. Very cool feeling sitting and standing in the middle of it and looking straight up. Mm -hmm. It's just huge. A it's very decorative ceiling. Scary huge. Like, ugh, I would not like this to fall down on me. <laughs> this is huge. <laughs> yes. <laughs> One of the uh, statue's heads is missing. Yeah, I do believe it fell off during an earthquake. That's worth looking up. Surely there's a story about it. Um, and they, they have to eventually, you know, recarve it and put it back up. <laughs> It's very unfortunate about that, but all all the rest of it's very well preserved. You know, we walked all around the lake around it to get good panoramic views, mm -hmm. and pictures. I lots of I, I would love to take my mom to it. I think that she would really like it. And your mom actually said that she's been there when she came to pick us up at the airport. Uh, we had been she, there. <laughs> yeah, I, I told her all the places that we went to, and she. Knew pretty much every single one, had been to almost every single one herself because she used to live yeah, in San up, Francisco she grew and up near in it. Oakland. Yeah. She, she grew up in Oakland and would go into San Francisco all the time. And like, 
Yeah, it's no, it's you can't impress her with anything. <laughs> like, she w- she was glad that we went to them, though. I think like that we had actually been to a place that she had. Mm-hmm. That's just how she is. She likes to know that people are have done something or are interested in what she had been interested in. <laughs> and you know, the thing is, when we were there at the palace, you said to me, "I bet." This is a place that my mom has been to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you were right. <laughs> I was like, I bet you've been here opening day. <laughs> <laughs> Another place I didn't go to, um, and this is uh, by choice after having to look it up. I wanted to. Um, I wanted to go to the top of the tallest building in San Francisco, the Salesforce Tower. Uh, I learned that uh, they had scheduled tours that were only open certain days of the week, and so that was kind of a no-go because we would have had to build our schedule around that, and that's just a little too difficult. And they were only allowing so many people up to the observation deck at a time, so we probably would have waited there for hours anyway. So that just would have been annoying. But I pretty much mostly wanted to see, out of all the buildings, uh, you know, the skyscrapers in the city. I wanted to see the Transamerica Pyramid, and I got to. We can't go up to the observation deck in that one because it's been closed for years now, actually. That was one of the first days we didn't get anything to eat either anywhere. We, uh... No, we went to Fisherman's Wharf and ate at In-N-Out Burger. Oh, yeah. What What day was it we went... I went to Burger King late at night. Like, I actually, well, not late, but like maybe about 9, 10 that o'clock. That was the very first night because I had my migraine. I had a migraine when I first came into the city, but I was still so happy to see everything that it was still, that that I, I kind of just ignored it until we got to the hotel. And then it hit me, and I was like, okay, yeah, I, I need to eat something very salty and very greasy. Mm. <laughs> so I uh, went down, first off, I thought, there was a Walgreens on our corner and there wasn't, it was closed. Like it had been shut down for a while. So I walked to a little bodega and I, uh, got some chips and soup and sodas. And then I shuffled across the street. And I do say shuffle because there's a ton of homeless people and they don't bother you. They really don't at all. But I, being an out-of-towner, I, I was like, just blend in. So, <laughs> uh, As a matter of fact, the homeless people are mostly just around Van Ness Avenue, where yeah. City Hall is. I That's just, strange to me. City Hall is located on a, on a street where there's tons of homeless people. It's because there's a police presence, and they're safe, honestly. They're safe from being robbed and murdered. So that makes sense. <laughs> like I didn't see, uh, I didn't see any homeless really in any of the Asian districts or the other places we went to. Mm-hmm. But I tried to blend in and just look like a, a crackhead <laughs> while I was walking. <laughs> so it was also the only street. Uh, well, not the only street, but because uh, we didn't smell it at all in the, any of the Asian districts or anything. But it was the street where you smelled it the most. <laughs> Yeah, um, at random points everywhere in San Francisco, except for the Asian districts, you will get a big, shitty, stanky green smell whiff of weed constantly, constantly. Like you'll be, it's it's like when in the winter when you're on a walk and you're like, oh, somebody making cookies. Yeah, and you keep walking, or they have their fireplace. Just running. keep walking. Ooh, somebody's making more cookies. <laughs> Ooh, or in the summertime when you smell barbecue. Yeah, somebody's having a barbecue. Then you keep walking. Uh, somebody mowing their lawn. Uh, somebody working on their car. Ooh, somebody barbecue. <laughs> it, it's like that. In San or, or the trash collection has not come by that dumpster yet. Obviously, they don't have DUI laws or something because people are freaking smoking well, dope while driving. Like I said, Hunt, San Francisco has been a city of firsts. And also, back in the 60s, in the hippie days, a lot of drug experimentation went on there. And they all grew up to be politicians. <laughs> <laughs> Light it up. But, yeah, it's a... Uh, it's a city that's just so... Interesting and enchanting, and you'll never be bored. There's always something different happening. <laughs> yeah. 
And that is one of the things. <laughs> when I looked up news for San Francisco, when we first got there, the first thing that popped up was, who delivers weed in San Francisco? <laughs> so my phone could tell I was in a hotel room and yep. immediately brought up an advertisement for who delivers weed in San Francisco. Uh, for those of you who may be wondering, because they know that we're a couple and they also know that we're gay, we did not go to the famous Castro district, which is uh, the quote-unquote gay district. Mm. A lot of the places there would have been closed anyway, mm -hmm. and a lot of them are just mostly geared toward clubs and uh, gatherings and uh, sex clubs, and uh, <laughs> it just really wasn't anything that I was interested in. <laughs> mm. So... Uh, before anybody wonders about that or puts it in the comments, why didn't you go to Castro? Well, that's why. <laughs> Honestly, anything you see there, you can see in any gay gay district in America. Yes, yes. It's... Or any gay bar, honestly. it's Here's the here's thing for those of you who don't know. I, uh, as a younger person, dated people who loved gay clubs who loved gay bars and drag shows and stuff it's not my thing it never was my thing i did it for them and if there's something i've gathered over the years it's all of it is the same there is nobody doing one thing better than the other it's all boring and all just we we know why we're there we're not there to socialize we're not there to to do anything other than get drunk press up against each other and maybe go home with each other. I'm sorry. I know. Oh, but I love the drag shows. It's part of our culture and stuff. It's like, <sighs> well, being gay is not a culture. I, that I know a lot of people will disagree with. I know it's, but it's not. I, I don't know. It's like, I don't know. There's people who oh, I don't want to get into it. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> anyway. I'm not going to say it. I don't like, I don't like, <laughs> I don't like to dance scenes. I don't like club scenes. I don't yeah. like, here's the thing. I don't like any club scene. I don't. I don't even mm. like rock club scenes. Mm. I don't like the idea of gathering together just so you can get drunk and rub up against each other and fight mm -hmm. one another. Because there's always a damn fight. That's all there is. At the end of the night, somebody's getting into a fight. Now, and that's it. <laughs> we will make that absolutely clear. We like concerts. Yes. I like concerts, and I like safe <laughs> concerts, and I like, yes. I like decency. How about that? I like the comfort and decency of a safe concert. Exactly. And I know there's people who specifically hate nice concerts, and they're like, man, we used to tear it up back in, back in the 90s. You never knew if you were coming home or not. It <laughs> oh, was please. awesome. It was the 90s. Don't even get me started about how much I hate the 90s, actually. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we used to throw down. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> Palace of the Fine Arts was on Halloween, and that was the first stop on our Halloween day. Uh, you know, we've had some interesting Halloweens together. And we have. I, I, If anyone would have told me that I would have been in one of my favorite cities on Halloween, and I would have gone to the Palace of the Fine Arts, and then... After that, I would have walked across the Golden Gate Bridge. Uh, I probably would have told them that they were lying. <laughs> Those are things that I would want to do, but I didn't think it was going to happen on that specific day and with the love of my life. <laughs> yes, uh, after the palace, we went to the Golden Gate Bridge, and I walked across it for the first time. I have ridden over this bridge in a car, I have sailed under it on a tour boat, and I have flown over it in a plane. The last thing you have to do is walk across it. <laughs> and when you do, you walk across it. Don't just walk halfway and turn back. <laughs> like a lot of people did. Like a lot of people did. <laughs> you need to walk across the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Famously uh, built in Art Deco style, and and also it's very famous red paint so that it would reflect the sun and give it its golden hue that it is known for. Uh, one of the longest bridges in the world. It doesn't seem like it so much now, you know, compared to other bridges, but it still is. It's still very long. Um, we walked across the whole thing. A lot of people stopped halfway through, and they uh, turned around. And there were points in time when it was just you and me. 
Yeah, toward the end it was just a- you and me. Yeah, by the time we reached uh, Sausalito, Sausalito, a, a little fishing in Marin village County. nestled in beautiful Marin County. Can we visit Sausalito? <laughs> <laughs> um, by Wait. the time we reached the other side, it was just us. Yeah, we, we were the only ones on the Golden Gate Bridge. We technically walked out of the city. Once yeah. you cross the Golden Gate Bridge, you leave the city. That's the whole thing about it. Uh, the Golden Gate Bridge very famously connected San Francisco with Marin County. <laughs> they needed to do that. Uh, and it was completed in 1937. So in a little over 10 years from now, the bridge will be over 100 years old. And it's still doing pretty well. Uh, on the On the South Tower, which is technically the first tower, if you're approaching from the San Francisco side, the first tower you see is actually the South Tower. The North Tower is on the Marin side. Um, it had a little bit of soot on it, on, on, on one of the towers, because uh, there was the really bad fires. And I don't know if anyone had saw like the pictures of... It was very, very apocalyptical. Uh, San Francisco was orange. The entire sky was orange from the soot of the fires that was going on in California. And it actually left some soot on the Golden Gate Bridge on one of the towers. And uh, they were, um, there's some scaffolding because uh, people were, uh, the workers were getting ready to clean off the bridge and stuff. And they're also hard at work at adding the safety net uh, in the similar style to the bridge. And they completed one side of it and they were working on the other side. So we got uh, lots of pictures of the bridge itself, and we stopped many times to look down at the water. Mm. Not tremendously windy. Not tremendously windy. It was windy. a little. It was a little windy. It was kind of hot because the sun was just beating down on us, but it was nice and cool. Yes. Um, when the wind blew, it was lovely. Mm-hmm. Um, just loud. The cars driving by, very yeah. loud. Um, you could feel the bridge vibrate as cars went by. So, <laughs> yeah. like, well, that's a good thing because if it doesn't vibrate, it breaks. <laughs> mm-hmm. You can definitely tell it is not a solid structure. It it is. It's very flexible and movable. Yes, it's flexible. It's almost alive. <laughs> and I made sure to touch the bolts and the wires and stuff. <laughs> reach over the edge and grab the cables and stuff, and just to say that I have. Um, yeah, it's a. Uh, Pretty, pretty nice. It's, here's the thing. And I don't, I don't want people to think that like I'm spoiled or anything, but it didn't from, from your feet to the ocean, it didn't feel very high up. It really didn't. It's, it's big. It's humongous. And especially considering the pillars in the middle, those are super high in the air. Yeah. We got, we stood right next to them and you, you can't even see the top when you're standing. Yeah, they're next hard to, them. to even get in frame to take pictures of. They're so tall. Yes, but from your feet to the ocean, it doesn't feel very far at all. It really doesn't. So it's, whether the tide was in that day, or or maybe just the ocean has risen a little bit more in the recent years. Mm-hmm. I definitely know I've been on higher bridges. Is a thing. I'm pretty sure I've been on higher bridges. Yeah, there are higher bridges than Golden Gate, for sure. There there are many. But at the time of its completion, it was one of the highest and longest bridges in the world. <laughs> I mean, a helicopter flew under us while we were on it. So, yeah, yeah that we was were pretty high. <laughs> that was interesting. Yeah. <laughs> it could have been just perspective. Um, one thing about the bridge is that uh, the two the two ends are a little bit lower than the middle. The middle is the highest point. It's up the highest. It's kind of almost bow shaped. Mm-hmm. You could feel it. You could feel yeah. it walking on that slight uphill to it. Just mm-hmm. very slight. Yeah. <laughs> pretty nice. That was the pretty much the grand finale of our trip. Mm-hmm. Was walking across the bridge. That was one of the last things I wanted to do. In and out burger was okay. It's not as impressive as everybody's oh, you haven't lived till you eat an in and out burger. It was it's okay. like every other fast food place. Yeah, it was okay. They put too much lettuce and too much tomato on on everything. Like every 
one does for hey, you. It, at least <laughs> I could actually get the lettuce off, unlike freaking McDonald's or whatever who uses shredded freaking lettuce, so I can't get it off unless I scrape it off. And then when I scrape it off, it scrapes my mayonnaise off. I don't like lettuce and tomato on, sa- on hamburgers. I just don't. I don't. He gives it to me. Usually I eat it. Yeah. <laughs> it was okay. Oh, paper straws. <laughs> oh, California yeah. has a straw yeah. law. They only you can only use paper straws. I got to use a paper straw I for didn't the first know that. time. I really didn't know that. And you said it felt weird. It feels kind of weird. It does. It <laughs> it feels like this is gonna dissolve in my mouth. This is gross. But um it's completely pointless because the caps are still plastic. So it doesn't matter. You could like you're gonna throw this cup away. And it's going to literally, like, let's say you didn't put it in recycling and you were a pig and you threw it on the sidewalk. The cup's going to dissolve. The straw's going to dissolve. The cap's still going to be there. So what? It's just like it's maybe a few percentage less plastic in the world. Like, I guess baby steps. I don't know. Maybe it also is a little bit more costly to make the plastic in a very specific straw shape. And yes. they have to order so many of them. Who knows? But, Just a little interesting tidbit, I guess. <laughs> yeah. It's all right. Lar- larges are not as large as they are here either in North Carolina. Oh, my God. When you get a large something here, it seems like it's going to kill you if you drink it all. La- a large soda here in North Carolina will not fit in a cup holder of a car. So, <laughs> like, in, But in California, a large is more like a medium. So. Yeah. It's actually consumable by a human. <laughs> but don't believe what people say that San Francisco's completely health conscious either because there's a lot of people there that were average is a thing. Yeah. There's a lot of people there who are just overweight or average size. And like there definitely were people who were exercising just like anywhere, but yeah, so we saw joggers on the bridge even. Yeah. There was that one guy that was like completely shirtless and I said, I wonder if that's like how he gets his exercise done Mm -hmm. because he, you know, um, you know how some people when they exercise, they have, they do it. Um, they, they'll, they purposely will jog shirtless in the cold. It like keeps them alert. Conditioning. Yeah. It conditions them and keeps them very alert. Mm -hmm. But then you said that, um, he had prison tattoos. Yeah, he's covered in prison tattoos. So he had been working out a lot in his life, and he had nothing else to do, so he probably has walked over that bridge Yeah, it's probably his day. ritual. Every day he's got to walk over that bridge along with, like, lift at least 300 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Practice shanking. <laughs> Jeez. Well, we never know what he went to prison for. What if he, what if he only stole cars? Tax evasion. <laughs> tax evasion there you go tax evasion that's why he's got those dollar signs and calculators tattooed <laughs> maybe he's really good with mathematics tattoo the that dow jones on my left arm <laughs> left <laughs> bicep you, know, you see that bull on my arm that's the bull of Ro- wall street right there i'm there feeling a go. little bullish today yes <laughs> anyway uh saw a lot of people wearing costumes on halloween yeah we drove past a a little uh, school for arts and stuff, and all the kids were on the fields dressed up as their Halloween characters. I and saw stuff. people getting into their cars and getting ready to go to Halloween parties or yeah. get-togethers. There were people dressed as cowboys and police officers. Classic skeletons. And skeletons. Stuff. Nobody dressed as you a know, plague doctor, though. Like I thought we'd see. I want a plague doctor mask. I would <laughs> love to have one. I've always loved the look of plague doctors. Um, one day I'll get one. Um, speaking of cowboys, so many guys wearing cowboy hats around Fisherman's Wharf. Yeah, cowboy hats are the thing in San Francisco right now. I don't know why. Everybody loves cowboy hats. Not a Halloween thing either, just every no, day. it was not on Halloween all the time. Yep. It was every day. <laughs> I just guess it's, it's the new thing. I, I know we were in California, technically the West. Yeah. But San Francisco does not feel like the typical West. It, in fact, it's really not. It's its own entity, its own personality. And mm-hmm. and it's got unique temperatures there, unlike the rest of California. Fashion just goes around and around. You never know what's going to take off. I always liked in uh, 
Back to the Future 2 win f- this for no reason. They wear two ties. It's like it's never explained. Oh, yeah. They don't they don't say that. like ever since we started wearing two ties and so nothing like that. <laughs> they it's just they have two ties because mm-hmm. it's the future and you don't know what's going to take off. <laughs> it's the future. <laughs> it's the future. Yes. Thank you for stopping by. <laughs> I love not to get into just talking about Back to the Future because I love that whole trilogy and excellent movies. But I love when he's in the future and he goes to that quote unquote antique store and the woman's like, now here's a little piece of history or something like that called a dust buster. <laughs> <laughs> and it's from the time that he's from yeah. and he sees them all the time. And you don't actually, you don't see dust busters anymore, believe it or not. <laughs> They're almost non-existent. We never had a dust dirt. We never had a dustbuster. We had a dirt devil. Should I tell the dustbuster story? Sure. I told it to you. Sure. I don't remember the dust dustbuster story, but go ahead. My sister threw up one day, and she thought it'd be a great idea to vacuum it up in the dustbuster, which <laughs> ruined it and made it smell like her puke every time you turned it on. Uh, so my mom threw out the whole contraption. <laughs> We we had the very first iteration of a dirt devil, and it looked very retro, and it was it, it was very nice. I really miss that. I, I think it burnt out. I think it just started burning every time you turn it on. You could smell electricity, and we just ended up throwing it away. They they did that. Dustbusters didn't last long. Um, they would burn out a lot. It was a solid metal, red dirt devil with the classic like almost toaster front to it. It had a flat toaster front to it. I know what you're talking about. They're very retro looking. Yeah, it was very retro, and it had a bag on it, a red bag that was plaid and had, like, Dirt Devil written in it and stuff with little horns. Actually, I always loved the way those looked. (laughs) And, uh, like, a devil's tail and stuff. It was very retro looking, but I think it was made in the 70s. I think it was a 70s model. My mom also had an orange tank vacuum cleaner it was just like a tank on wheels <laughs> and the cord would you'd pull out like a an extension cord and it was spring loaded you yeah. pull it and go back in it was orange it had the big pipe uh thing yeah. on it <laughs> i bet that, i bet we still have that dustbusters were a lot of uh, were a lot like a little i won't say that they were the iconic piece of the 80s but they were included in many things Mm -hmm. like even in that very famous opening sequence of honey i shrunk the kids Mm -hmm. the little animated sequence they're running away from a giant dust buster (laughs) in one part it it was just part of like the 80s scene almost every household had one it was a very novel thing a miniature Mm -hmm. handheld vacuum like damn it's it's like the idea is a very good idea. It's just what they had made, they burnt out too quickly. Mm-hmm. If they could remake them and better design them, they'd be fine. It's a, lot like, it's a lot like what they did with the Roomba. A lot of people don't know the first iteration of the Roomba was invented in the late 50s. It wasn't called the same thing, but it did exist. I remember when the Roomba came out when I was a kid. So we're talking the 90s, so it's not too modern. Yeah, it's not too. It's modern. just recently they integrated it with your phone and stuff, so now it's high tech. <laughs> and they put it in commercials and stuff with cats. <laughs> yeah, cats like to ride them. Apparently, I don't know if Sadie would. I don't. Know. Sadie cannot. That's that's one thing that Sadie cannot stand is the vacuum. Yeah, she is fearless with anything else. You can you can throw a ball at her that is twice the size of her body, and she'll chase after it. But if you bring out the vacuum, it's a demon from hell. Mm-hmm. I'm really glad that you enjoyed going to these places with me when we were in San Francisco. It really made me very happy. Other than the Golden Gate Bridge, I never would have otherwise. I, I don't think I would ever have gone to the Palace of Arts. I don't think... I would ever hang out in Japan town unless I was, you know, single and <laughs> actually looking to looking for a boyfriend or something in Japan town, which I actually really didn't see too many which young when, people when we were out. When I was younger, I was dumb enough that I actually did. I just hung around malls at 
fuck friggin' ten o'clock in the morning on a weekday, and it's like maybe I'll run into run into a boy, and and we'll we'll live happily ever after. No, that's happen. not a dumb thing. Didn't then. happen. Didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a dumb thing. But I wondered if I you know I was always going to the library. I had kind of hoped maybe I'd run into an intellectual boy for once instead of the fucking dumbasses that I always knew in school. <laughs> Yes, I like men with brains, okay? I do. <laughs> Too bad I only got brawn. <laughs> no, you have a brain. You're creative and... Hey, you know what? Other boys had their chance. They didn't, they didn't show interest in me. So I don't really care what they think now. I have Maya. <laughs> well, I think we will eventually go back to San Francisco again in the future. I honestly would really love to live there one day, but who knows? Who knows where life takes you? Yeah. I, I Like I said, I wouldn't have gone to all these places otherwise, but I do feel like life takes you different places, and I would have eventually gone there mm-hmm. for one reason or another. I probably would have driven over the bridge, not walked on it. But life will bring us elsewhere. I think some of the best trips... Are ones that you don't a hundred percent plan, or you or you're not a hundred percent ready for. Yeah, and I kept telling myself that the whole trip. Any time I f- was feeling stressed, it was like I I need this, whether I believe it or not, and whether I know it now or not. Yeah, I need this, and I need to experience this. And yes, I know there's lots of people that have experienced more already. Yes, I know. I know when you were 19, Daddy sent you to Japan for a back trap, backpack trip, but <laughs> I... Who cares? Yeah. Everyone's it's... story is different, and this was more meaningful to me than anything I did in my childhood. I couldn't stand a lot of my childhood. And if my mother's listening right now, it's not your fault. <laughs> you know that. But, um... Yeah, I've I've had much more time enjoying life as an adult. Mm-hmm. There was times when I was younger, uh, especially my late teen years, I didn't know what was going to happen to me in life, and there were times when I didn't care about life anymore. But I now that I do, I want to do all of these things, and I'm just very happy to have been in San Francisco for the time that I was, for the week that I was, with the one person I care about most, and it's very important to me. And It's like that even if I went to, like, uh, a a small town or something. Mm -hmm. We have. We've gone on little day trips places. Like, it doesn't have to be San Francisco, it doesn't have to be Japan, it doesn't have to be New York or any other place that we plan to go to. Like, I've been happy just going to the freaking Waffle House down the road or something. Mm-hmm. I've had much more enjoyment out of life as an adult. And because, you know, nobody tells me... I know this is going to sound very... uh not selfish, but like no one is telling me what to do or what not to do, and that's a very great feeling because I had, I I know that as I uh, as a child and a teenager, yeah, you have your parents and stuff, and they and they do tell you what you need to do and not to do. But I had it to a point from not not just certain parents, but also from just every other person in my life and it was very extreme and I was very much a loner and I didn't want to be around people I couldn't stand people so <laughs> the loner yeah <laughs> a loner I didn't like who I was in the past and I'm very much I'm much more comfortable now <laughs> I'm not trying to get too uh, dramatic into it right now or anything but I'm just very glad to have had this trip and looking back on it in fond memories. I definitely feel like I've had a real rough 
spot with myself in the last five or six years where I've slowly but surely kind of regressed and gone inward a bit. And, like, it's come out, and I, I do think it's part of, like, PTSD and a lot of things I haven't really been able to cope with that well. Stress of work, working a lot, and just a lot of really rough times for myself where when I was younger and coming of age, I was just very open and very, like, ready and gung-ho to just do the next wild thing where I was, I would hop into a pickup truck and I would drive 900 miles west and just, you know, hang out with family I didn't even know and stuff and then drive back. And I didn't think a thing about it. And now I just get so stressed and I get so anxious and so strung out. And... I just had to let go, is what I felt. I had to just let go and let it happen. And it helped that I was with you and that I was able to be with someone that I trusted and someone I knew wouldn't lead me into something I wouldn't be comfortable with Mm -hmm. and somebody who understood if I was too stressed out to do something or like couldn't afford something or mm. whatever, what it be. Yeah. Yeah. I felt comfortable enough to let go. I w- was felt comfortable, comfortable enough to let my guard down. And I needed reminding a few times while I was there. But now that it's all over and we made it through the airport, <laughs> which is <laughs> honestly returning the car and getting our flight connections and all that stuff. Honestly, that that's that was the most detailed thing, honestly. Everything else, it was just you get into a car and you make sure not to drive down one-way roads and that's yeah. it. That that's the adventure part. When we got to San Francisco and after we were settled into the hotel, then it was time to let adventure begin, just let us discover things. And it's hard to turn that off to yeah. turn the cautionary side off and well, yeah you gotta have if to a certain extent you gotta be cautious of course because you're in a place that you've uh either one never been to or haven't been to in a long time or and of course you gotta always be careful but mm-hmm. at the same time you're wanting life to happen <laughs> mm-hmm. you're not going to discover anything if you don't let let that happen or let yourself kind of just walk around and see things or get a little bit lost or something. Make friends with a crackhead. How'd <laughs> <laughs> you get all this chocolate on your face? <laughs> Motherfucker. Oh, no. That ain't chocolate. That's doo-doo, baby. <laughs> no. <laughs> what is that from? It's Dave Chappelle. <laughs> You've said that before and I didn't... <laughs> That's doo baby. Like, what the hell? <laughs> we did pass a, a Burger King bag on the ground that had doo doo in it. We did? Yeah, you didn't notice it. Oh, I did. Ew. I'm pretty sure it was human. It was pretty big, unless it was like a pit bull well, or something. I don't even know if I should mention this because it's kind of graphic. <laughs> I did witness a, a, a death scene once while riding in downtown Pittsburgh, there was one street that was closed off and like they had a, a body sheet laying over a body and they're supposed to block that off from the traffic, but I guess they couldn't block all of it. Mm -hmm. And then there was another part that was covered too, like half across the road. (laughs) And I was like, Oh my God, I don't know what that is. (laughs) And the, and the wall, um, I mean, the car was, like, slammed up against the wall. Must have been, like, the scarecrow. A little bit, little bit of me over there, a little bit of me over there. It was, um, the, the wall itself that the car was crashed into was, like, um, a small tunnel. It was just one of those little overpass tunnels mm-hmm. that go through cities. It's not a real long one, but, yeah, that was... <laughs> That's sad. 
it is sad, but it's. Uh, I hope that didn't gross out in too many people, but it's. It couldn't be any worse than me talking about having doo doo on your face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just. Yeah. <laughs> When yeah. you go into cities, you're going to see things because... Yeah, we passed a guy uh, smoking crack right over a trash can. Yeah. It's just... When you when you go to a city, it's a place daylight. where it's there's a high concentration of people and people are doing things. Yeah. It's skid Row, baby. <laughs> it's just the way it is. <laughs> I actually love cities. I like being in them. I would love to live in them. And uh, Then I also do... Uh, like living in suburbia too, because I like my privacy. But I wouldn't mind living in an apartment building as long as I get to keep my privacy, <laughs> and I have a place to put a car. <laughs> Surprisingly, a lot of the apartment buildings in San Francisco have garages, not the ones toward downtown, but um, in the surrounding neighborhoods, especially Presidio. Um, they all have little garages. <laughs> mm-hmm. Very nice. <laughs> we made it home. We went from San Francisco to Denver. Denver on the way back home. Yeah, to North, no, to Raleigh. Raleigh. So we did all right, especially considering that day Donald Trump came into my hometown. So that is so weird. Yeah, and I'm glad he didn't come to Raleigh because the airport would have been shut down. They do that when when. The president decides he's going to go someplace spur of the moment. They shut the airport down. So they would have shut our airport down and we would have been diverted <laughs> somewhere else, probably Charlotte. And I would have been even more angry at him than I am now. <laughs> Can't stand the man. Whoa. No politics on Domino Cast. It's not politics. That's I'm not just the Domino about Cast somebody I, know. I don't like. <laughs> and this is my cast, so. <laughs> my little podcast. <laughs> no. no, I cannot stand that song. <laughs> uh, he's doing the My Little Pony theme, which I also hate. <laughs> You're even giving it a chance. I don't need to. Some things you just know you're not going to like. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we made it home. Sadie was happy to see us. Yes, our kitty is very happy to see us. She's very so excited chirpy and, and rubby and, and kissy. And, yeah. She was such a kitty. She stayed with her grandmother while we were away. Mm-hmm. Made busy time for her. <laughs> she uh, carved a pumpkin. <laughs> well, Sadie, Sadie, Sadie herself pumpkin. didn't carve it, but she... <laughs> She joined the experience, apparently, by laying on the pumpkin. Yeah, and getting in the way. And <laughs> Wish we had pictures. Yeah, that would have been nice. <laughs> Send us pictures of our daughter while we're, while we're away. But yeah, she slept with us all night. She's all sleeping night. right she, now over on the bed. She wouldn't get off of me. She slept right on me like a turkey all night, just sitting right on top of my chest. <laughs> she kept asking me to play when I got home. She kept uh, like she would jump up on the dining table when I'd walk by, I'd run over and grab at me and <laughs> asking me to play with her. <laughs> it was very welcoming. Well, that is the story of what we did in San Francisco. <laughs> yep, sightseeing, uh exploring alleyways. <laughs> there were other little more in detail, little tidbits and stuff, but uh, that's pretty much everything. <laughs> mm-hmm. Very relaxing, honestly, if you get rid of the driving part. I think next time we travel anywhere, I think we're going full taxi. I don't think I want to do, I don't think I want to rent cars anymore. Yeah. It'll be pricey to go and use public transportation, but honestly, the renting a vehicle is also pricey. Mm-hmm. I yeah, honestly it think it would have cost just for all the insurance I got. I think it would have cost just as much. I really do. Probably. Like and if we signed up with Uber or Lyft, yeah. it would have cost just as much. And it's not like we were in the car all the time. I actually wanted to make an appointment to not be in vehicles all the time. I wanted to walk around and see things. 
And that's a lot. We we don't, you know, we're healthy, but we don't do a lot of walking. We really don't. We don't yeah. walk around cities that much. Because it's so damn hot here. You don't yeah. want to walk around here. You don't want here. to walk around here. <laughs> that's why I loved the temperature in San Francisco. It was so relaxing to be able to walk outside and not feel like I'm going to die from heat stroke or, you know, because I have my medical issues. Like I have my my eczema, my skin gets bothered very easily by heat. And I don't walk around a whole lot because of my heart condition, but I still walk around, of course, because, you know, I have to mm. in order to stay healthy. But, um... Yeah, I was fine walking across the Golden Gate Bridge. I remember you were a little concerned about that. Yeah, I was afraid you'd be either too cold or the sun would hurt your skin. Or I would maybe get winded and have to Yeah, turn winded, we only make it... I told you, mm-hmm. now, do you think you can make it? Because... <laughs> it's a I'm, lot of walking. I'm going to have to carry right. your ass back. <laughs> I was all right. I, I, in my mind, I think I knew I would be all right. Mm-hmm. The only thing that I don't like walking on that actually does make me tired quickly is hills. I don't like walking up hills. Mm. Now, going to a city that is built on hills, yes, it's a little difficult. Um, And considering the fact that um, if I had lived there, obviously I would have to get used to doing that, but I just would walk mostly down hills. (laughs) Maybe you should train yourself a little. My treadmill goes upward. Yeah, I might do that. I do it's use it. I, I very much like having that in the house, actually. It's good for your calves, and if you work out your calves, then like that means you're working out your the back of your thighs and your butt, too. Yeah, so. I don't know if it's completely my muscles that get tired. I think it's just uh, my heart that does. But, Did you leave your heart in San Francisco? Uh, I'll say yes and no. <laughs> uh Yes, because the place always enchants me whenever I'm there. It's a very enchanting place for me. Uh, I love it. But I'll also say no, because my heart is also wherever you are. We're ending with the sappiest note possible. (laughs) (laughs) You know that I'm like that. I'm a romantic and I'm a sappy person at heart, even though I'm also have a hard exterior. (laughs) Is there anything else you want to add toward the end? Uh, I liked it. I'm glad we went, and I can't wait to go on another adventure. Don't know when it will be, because we didn't know this was coming. It yes, just happened. It did. And I, I want to, no matter what, even if it's not a situation I 100% enjoy or am prepared for, I want to be able to let go more often like that. Just let go and let what needs to happen just happen. Don't be... Because honestly, that's probably why I was so stressed at times because I haven't just let go in so long. Everything's needed to be just right for so long. And like... I I get panicky at the thought of letting go and not being in control. So I need to expose myself to it more often and I honestly can't wait till it till it happens next. Mm-hmm. When it does, I'll be ready. I guess we'll see. <laughs> well, that will be the episode uh epic episode. That will be the end of the uh, uh, episode 20 of Domino Cast. <laughs> Who knows what the next topic will be getting toward the end of the year. But until next episode, bye for now. B. Uh, do I still have to lie? Um. Um, let's see. I don't know.